You are in Johan uh, Johannesburg, right? A teaching. I'm not sure if you're there right now, but that's part of your background. Um, yeah. South Africa yeah. obviously brought the genocide case against Israel to the International Court of Justice. Like, just from your perspective, um, what I mean, wh what does being South African mean in this context of viewing uh, Zionism and why? Uh, th there's this historic solidarity um, between uh, m uh, many people in South Africa and the Palestinian people. Well, <clears throat> I, I think it's it, it's really because uh, anybody I think who's politically conscious in South Africa, uh, who was aware of what damage apartheid did to our society, and who uh, perhaps at a certain age was was active in fighting apartheid at the time finds very clear parallels with the, 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 the situation of the Palestinian people. I mean, no historical situation is identical to another one. But, uh, uh, you know, going beyond the reason I wrote this book, uh, I mean, my own uh, interest in this, in, in this particular issue was very much stimulated by increasing, similar, increasing similarities I noticed, not only in how, how Palestinians had been treated uh, compared to how black South Africans were treated under apartheid, uh, but about the justifications which we used to say, this is okay and, 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 and we're superior to them uh, and therefore we're entitled to do that to them. Uh, and of course, uh, the, the governing party in South Africa, the African National Congress has uh, links to Palestine, which go back to the 1960s, uh, because at that stage, of course, South Africa uh, was under apartheid, uh, and uh, the Palestine Liberation Movement was uh, was 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 fighting the Israeli state, uh, and they saw tremendous parallels between the two. Uh, those parallels, of course, were reinforced by the fact that the uh, South African apartheid government and the Israeli government cooperated. Uh, very tightly on on military issues and even on the development of a nuclear weapon for South Africa, which South Africa uh, abandoned when uh, it was quite clear that the next government would be black. Um, so there's a very strong identification. Uh, incidentally, just uh, one point, which uh, uh, I have an article coming out, uh, hopefully in a US publication in the next while or so, which which discusses the ICJ issue. Uh, and one of the points I make there, just, just for the edification of mainstream Americans, is that uh, the ANC's allies in Palestine have never been Hamas. Uh, it has always been Fatah, uh, the, the Palestine Liberation Organization. Uh, ironically, the folks uh, who the US administration say should be running Gaza. Uh, on the day in which South Africa's case was heard at the ICJ, there was a rally in Ramallah uh, which was addressed not by Hamas, but by Mohammed Stay, who's the Prime Minister of the Palestinian Authority. Uh, so there's a very uh, strong uh, link going back uh, ages, uh, in, you know, which is still uh, it's an integral part of uh, it's, it's if, if you are in South Africa, and I am, you know, I'm still in South Africa. Uh, I mean, it's not uncommon for ANC politicians, governing party politicians, uh, at various events to wear the Palestinian kafir, for example. It, it's, it's very common. Uh, and if you get invited, as, as some of us were recently, uh, to, 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 to express our views at a meeting at the foreign ministry, uh, then you discover that the Palestine ambassador uh, is the person who's moderating the discussion, etc. Uh, so there's a very strong feeling, uh, you know, this Mandela quote, which you may or may not have heard, that South Africans won't be free until the Palestinians are free, uh, is quoted regularly. Uh, but there's a very clear sense among anti-apartheid South Africans and anti-racist South Africans uh, that uh, there are very strong parallels uh, which mean that uh, anti-apartheid sentiment uh, obliges you to support uh, Palestinian aspiration. The, uh, I'm also struck by the the and I at one point and I don't I don't know if, uh, how much of this comes from uh, Mamdani or uh, I I can't recall uh, but the idea of uh, Israel the 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 substitution the sort of the fluidity of the word democracy when really what it really is signifying is Western. Right, that mm. that, that Israel yeah. as a democracy is really not. So, it's really hard to make an argument that it is a democracy 
in the sense of, you know, I mean, we have Puerto Rico, uh, that is a territory that we control. And I think like there is, it is rare to find anybody at least only a half of the sort of the, the political spectrum in this country to, to not acknowledge that like there there's no democracy there. They, they don't have a representation, but we say the same thing about Washington DC and then, you know, to apply that standard to the literally millions of people who have no autonomy, no say in their government whatsoever or, the, or what governs them anyways. Um, and, and on some level, like, and I, and I, and I can't recall, frankly, I mean, it was, it was uh, how we, at least in this country referenced South Africa. When I think of like, you know, when I think of the, the sort of, to the extent that, uh, the, the U S was, was, uh, uh, weighing in on the sort of the political uh, pressure, you know, Reagan was talking about uh, constructive engagement at that time in, in South Africa, and uh, the, the presumption being that at least it's you know it's somewhat d democratic a little bit, I guess, and <laughs> um, and but in fact it really was just a question of like it's Western, like you know we go into a room and everybody looks more or less the same and you know we listen to the same type of music or we have you know we all have banana republic on the corner whatever it is i mean that 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 seems to be the notion of democracy in western seems to be pretty uh interchangeable in, in some ways absolutely absolutely i mean you've hit the nail on the head and uh, you know that might be my next project because uh, most of my academic work is, in fact, on democracy and, and on, on democratic theory. And uh, I'm now absolutely convinced that uh, democracy uh, among in the Western mainstream actually means Western. It's got nothing to do with uh, democratic society. I mean, just your point about apartheid. Yes, Reagan talked about constructive engagement, which said, you know, which really meant being nice to the apartheid government. But if you go back further, uh, which people have tended to forget about, under the Nixon administration, uh, Kissinger and various people around him uh, produced these then classified documents in effect saying precisely what you've just said, saying, look, you know, whether, whether we think apartheid's a good idea or not, these are our people, these, the, the, there's a Western outpost, and who knows what would happen if, if things went wrong, and we ought to support those people. Uh, there is no doubt that the only reason you know, the U.S. passed legislation uh, imposing sanctions on apartheid South Africa in the mid-1980s. And that was imposed because the American public, uh, organized groups in America demanded it. In Europe, the same. Uh, if you hadn't have had citizens mobilizing and demanding this change, it would never have happened because the elites took the view, these are Westerners like us, uh, and, and, and we will protect them. And then, of course, uh, you know, you start talking about, well, you know, under apartheid, white South Africans had elections and they were, they were free and fair for 10% of the population. You know, 90% was living in trains, but you overlook that. Uh, and uh, a lot of my work is on the way in which uh, academics uh, in the West see democracy, etc. cetera. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you scratch the surface, it, it, it really does become... Uh, they're Western like us, um, you know, and, uh, and the, the, the kind of assumption, which is what a lot of my work is a critique of, uh, that somehow, uh, you know, the West has perfected democracy uh, is highly questionable. I mean, you in the US have the situation where the presidential election is not necessarily won by the candidate with the largest, with the most votes, right. uh, where there's voter suppression, uh, you know. The where, Senate uh, is also uh, uniquely anti-democratic. Uh, you know, the, 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 the English still have uh, uh, a hereditary House of Lords, which which can veto legislation, etc. Um, so really, you know, you, you, you've, as I say, you've got it exactly right. Uh, uh, democracy in this in, in, in this sense is, uh, you know, like like us Westerners. It's got nothing to do. I mean, you know, to me, democracy is about people's uh, power and and right to control their own lives and make choices on on, on the issues which affect them. And it's really got nothing to do with that. And I guess as, as I articulate it, I mean, the the strategy that the Biden administration has pursued, at least, you know, up to this point, 
has certainly felt like like the way that Reagan sold constructive engagement. Let's you know keep these people close and uh, be nice to them, and then eventually they'll listen to us. Uh, I mean, I don't know how sincere that is or how a a representative of the actual dynamic between uh, the Biden administration and the Israelis. But that's certainly what is being so. And, and frankly, I don't think it was that way with Reagan uh, and the apartheid regime at that time either. But it's certainly the way that it's sold as an attempt to diffuse uh, people's, um, you know, uh, public response to the situation and, and i'll just add as we talk about democracy then biden and the white house is also saying well we're going to have saudi arabia take over uh <laughs> as the representatives for the palestinian people and there's no conversation about what these millions and millions of people want for their own self-determination just to to add to everything you, you guys have been saying no absolutely correct look i suspect that what Biden is doing in relation to, to Palestine at the moment is what Reagan wanted to do in relation to South African apartheid uh, and wasn't allowed to do. And, and he wasn't allowed to do it at the times because there was uh, a UN arms embargo. Uh, so you were breaking into, you quite flagrantly breaking international law by selling arms to apartheid South Africa. I mean, it was done under the table, but they didn't do it publicly. Uh, and uh, you know, you, I'm sure Reagan's view, you, judge, you know, looking carefully what he had to say, was, uh, you know, pal up with these people, uh, tut tut occasionally if they do something outrageous, uh, and and but but don't break the friendship bond, which is really uh, exactly what the Biden administration is doing. And of course, it, you know, if you if you take it at face value, and I'm I'm skeptical that we should, but just for argument's sake, uh, it clearly never works. Uh, uh, you know, the, the only way. Uh, you're going to move towards some kind of justice and some kind of resolution of, of, of in Palestine is is through pressure. Uh, the Israeli state has to get to a situation where it believes that it better negotiate uh, because uh, you know it's 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 having to pay a price if it doesn't. Well, uh, w one of the, the the fears I've had over the uh, past uh, 10, 15 years is uh, I think probably best expressed in the question of like. What if the apartheid government had had a nuclear weapon at that time? Like, I mean, what if there was, um, there was, they felt that they were um, inoculated in some, to some extent in terms of like, um, the the potential for the the economic boycotts i mean there's a lot of american companies that were there and uh, major companies and um there was probably a higher degree of sensitivity on some level to uh the outside for economic resources um and i think there was also um a, perhaps a, 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 there's a greater critical mass in israel amongst its citizenry in terms of this sense of like, you know, uh, for lack of a better term, almost like a Masada complex. But yeah. what if the apartheid regime had a, a nuclear weapon uh, at that time? Like, would, would we have seen the resolution that we saw? It did have a nuclear weapon at the time. Um, so, yeah, we would have. It did have a nuclear weapon at the time. It chose not to use it. And the reason it chose not to use it is that there was no point if if the if the threat was external if the threat was beyond the country's borders then maybe they would have used it uh but they were perfectly well aware that the threat was uh, on their own doorstep um so you couldn't use that particular deterrent without wiping your own people out uh i think the other factor which does make uh the situation in 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 the israeli state more difficult now than uh, in our situation, is uh, that the level of interdependence was so great, despite the horrors of apartheid, etc. Uh, I mean, you could, you know, if 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 black people had withdrawn their labour permanently, uh, the place would have collapsed. Everything was run by black. You know, everything was uh, relied on black labour. Whereas that that's not the same case there. Um, and 
it became increasingly clear, incidentally, uh, and I don't think we've got there in in in, in, the, in the in the Israel uh, Palestine uh, conflict yet. Um, that also white South Africans, because of apartheid, got very comfortable. Uh, and they started realizing that actually, you know, uh, if things do change politically, uh, they they can carry on to, you know, living rather well uh, and uh, insulating themselves to a large extent from the changes which happen. Uh, so there was never the same... I mean, there was never there was there was never any sort of Masada complex, quite frankly, because uh, uh, you know I think if you'd suggested it to most white Afrikaners, they you know they would much rather be, you know, visiting Swiss ski resorts and uh, and buying the latest technology than than sacrificing themselves. Uh, it, it's a uh, fascinating stuff. Stephen Freeman, director of the Center for the Study of Democracy at the University of Johannesburg, author of Good Jew, Bad Jew: Racism, Anti-Semitism. And the assault on meaning. Thanks so much for your time today. We'll put a link uh, to your book at uh, majority.fm and in the podcast and YouTube description. Thank you, Sam. Thanks very much. Thank you.